Hi everyone, and welcome to Noodle Journey. First, some awesome news. The channel hit 100 subscribers right around the time episode 18 came out. And I can't believe that there are a hundred of you that like to watch me review noodles, but I thank you for getting me to my first major milestone. I've got some great stuff to review in the pipeline, but today will be a special 25th episode looking at Nangshim Neoguri. Yes, this is the counterpart to the Nangshim Chapagetti episode. Combine Chapagetti and Neoguri, add some filet mignon, and you get Chapagori or Ramdan, like in the movie Parasite. Or take the lazy route and buy the prepackaged Chapagori that Nangshim now sells. But how does this stand on its own? We'll find out. This package of Neoguri is a spicy seafood soup with udon type noodles. Neogori also comes in the stir-fry variety with different noodles, which is in my review pile, and a mild version, which I do not have, as well as in cup and bowl form, so yeah, it's pretty popular. Be on the lookout for packaging differences if you choose to buy this and want one type over the other. My nearby Wegman stocks this, and you can easily find it in Asian grocery stores and on pretty much any website that sells noodles. A four-pack of these should go for around $8 to $10, with individual packs hitting that $2 price point as well. Or you can go crazy, like I did, and buy a variety pack from Kokoyam, and this will almost assuredly be in it. Link will be in the description. So this episode took quite a twist behind the scenes as I was getting ready to film, which is why I saved it for a 100 subscriber special. Here's the twist. This is the package that I got from Kokoyam. And this is a package I bought from Wegmans because I wanted to do the Chapagori recipe. Notice anything different? Right as I was about to film, I saw this, made in the USA not on this package. If you remember back in episode two, I talked about how Nongshim Black has some noticeable flavor and spice differences between the imported version from Korea versus the version manufactured in America. Because of that, I'm always on the lookout for where my noodles were made, and because I'm doing my best to give you all the noodle info you need to make an informed decision, I do a little research before I film, including checking out the important ingredients and nutritional information ahead of time so that I can write a little script for each video so I'm not talking out of my ass while I'm filming. I know we're getting a bit meta right now, but the point is I had to put the brakes on my originally intended filming of this because there is a significant difference between these two products that may affect both the overall flavor and your dietary needs. Nutritionally, these are identical. They both have 1,850 milligrams of sodium. They both contain the same special udon type noodle that is not the usual nangshim noodle that you'd see in shin ramen. They both contain a powdered seafood broth made from seafood like clam, mussel, anchovy, and tuna. But check this out. This is a Korean import manufactured in Seoul for American markets. Since the USDA doesn't care as much about imported seafood products as it does about other things, this might be the version you see at your local Asian market. In addition to the other fish I mentioned, this version contains shrimp extract and a fish called sea bream to flavor its broth. This version comes from Nongshim's factory in California and is what you will likely find at your non-Asian supermarkets. And this one does not contain shrimp or sea bream, but rather beef fat, beef extract, and beef bone extract. So this one is pescatarian friendly, and this one is very much not. And I don't know about you, but shrimp and beef don't taste remotely the same to me. So it's possible that these are going to have very different flavor profiles, which could affect my overall score. Crazy, right? So what does a thorough noodle head like me do in a situation like this? Well, since this is a special episode, I'm going to cook both of these and review them side by side. American version on the right, Korean version on the left, for the rest of this video. For your records, in case you didn't watch the Chapagetti video and were curious, there's 1100 milligrams of sodium in that one. So if you decide to hack one of these Neogori packs with a pack of Chapagetti into Chapagori, be aware that that is 2,950 milligrams of sodium, or 130% of your daily allowance if you use the entirety of both sauce packets. But that's a hack for another day. Maybe. But you tell me if you want to see that. So let's stop talking and get these cooking. The instructions are the same for each package. We're going to boil 500 milliliters of water, and then add the noodles, the soup powder, and the flakes, and cook this for five minutes or longer if you prefer softer noodles, and then remove from the heat and serve. And through the magic of editing, we now have two bowls of soup. 
Uh, in case you were curious, both flake packets consist of dried carrot and seaweed. Everything about that appears to be the same. Now, with seafood-based noodles, I find that the first question is always, does it smell fishy? And yeah, of course. They both do. Not in a foul, rotten way, which is what I assume some people mean by that, but you know, if you actively like seafood, nothing here is going to bother you. Does it taste too fishy is the question. So let's see. Let's start the review with the Korean version. All right, well then. The noodles are an excellent offering from Nongshim, as always. I can usually depend on them for great noodles. I have noticed in the past, and with Paldo's noodles too, that they tend to get absorbent pretty quickly and lose some texture. But this bowl finished first, and they've still managed to maintain a really great chewy, plump texture. These are thicker than Nongshim's regular noodles that you would see in Shin Ramen and Shin Black. And I think they complement the broth really well. They're nice and hearty. And they're fantastic. Uh, 8.5 out of 10. This being a spicy seafood soup, how spicy is it? It's spicy. It might not be quite as spicy as Shin Ramen, but it's close. I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10 for spice. And so the flavor and the fishiness. I noticed when this was cooking that there's definite aromas of bonito and tuna coming from it, which are strong fish flavors. The broth is a little bit sweet in addition to the spiciness, and I attribute that to the shrimp. The seaweed rehydrated nicely and adds a nice umami flavor to it. Overall, this is really delicious. Behind the seafood flavor, you've got your usual broth flavorings. I can taste garlic, onion, that sort of thing. Nothing too surprising there. Really, this is a nice balance of sweet and spicy. And if that's what you're looking for, in addition to some funk from the fish, then this is really good. I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10 overall for the Korean version. Now, on to the American version. Just give this a stir, since it's been sitting for a couple minutes. I noticed when this one was cooking that the broth tended to be a little more oily and foamy than the Korean version, and I have to chalk that up to the inclusion of the beef fat. That really makes a lot of sense here as to why it would look like that. Otherwise, I think the consistency of the broth looks to be about the same, but I won't know till I taste it. Wow, that was also very good. The noodles are the same, exactly the same. 8.5 out of 10 for texture. They're the thicker udon type noodles that are also in the Korean version. Spice level is about the same, six out of 10, nothing really noticeable to set them apart. The difference is in the flavor of the broth. So obviously what I'm going to sit here and tell you is that this tastes more like beef and this tastes more like shrimp, but what does that really mean? In comparison to something like Shin Ramen, Nongshim's basic flagship red chili Korean soup product, this is much closer to that flavor-wise because that is also a beef chili soup. This tastes like a beef chili soup that somebody threw a little bit of seafood into, whereas this Korean version more so tastes like an actual seafood soup. Does that make sense? This is also a very good product though, and I think which one of these I would go for would depend on my mood. Am I more in the mood for 
a beef soup with just a little kick of seafood in it, or am I in the mood for something nice and shrimpy? Hmm. Gotta say, I think I might prefer the shrimpy version, uh, but this is no slouch on its own. So I'm gonna give this an overall seven out of 10. So that was a pretty interesting review, our first side by side. While I think the Korean version is better by a hair, this is no slouch either. And I'm honestly not sure which of these is closest to the version that actually is manufactured and sold in Korea. I couldn't say for sure. Maybe someday I'll figure that out by getting my hands on a package of that. Or maybe it's on the internet. We'll see. Either way, regardless of which version of this you find, if you're in the mood for something nice and seafoody with a spicy punch, I think these are both great options. If you're a seafood lover, let me know in the comments what other seafood noodles are out there that you enjoy. This was fun, and hopefully in the future I can find some other noodle products with differing ingredients based on manufacturing origin to do some comparisons with. Until then, please like and subscribe to continue on this noodle journey with me.